All right, so a lot of you probably want to get into bass sound design, making cool sounds with Serum, but you know, you open it up and you're like, uh, what's going on? Uh, what does this do? What does this do? Etc. And you might watch a few tutorials, but then you kind of like want to make your own unique sounds. You start experimenting and trying to make your own cool sounds, but you don't really know what you're doing. You don't know the, the fundamentals of bass design and how you can use them to make your own sounds and make them sound good. So I wanted to make this video today to quickly go over some of my essential tips, I think, for creating basses. Let's get straight into it. The first thing I want to stress highly enough uh, is the whole idea of low and mono compatibility. A lot of the time, um, especially when adding things like Unison and Serum, and I'll just play this little sound here. So we've got this cool kind of plucky, distorted, wide, bass sound right and pretty simple filter but the problem is this sound is really cool but let's hear what happens when we chuck on a utility and turn it to mono see it sounds super thin and we lose a lot of that punch and power so what we can do and this is the case in a lot of sounds is we can layer in an in a version that has mono compatibility and we can do that a couple of different ways depending on the sound. Now the most obvious way I like to do this is by adding in a sub direct out most of the time so it bypasses the processing. Basically what this allows you to do is it's a simple sine wave which is the most pure tone that you can output out of a synthesizer and it just lays it underneath your existing sound so you get this clean mono low end no matter what happens um because obviously if your track's being played on a system where it's mono then you're going to lose that punch as we heard so now let's hear what it sounds like in mono you really maintain a lot of that presence in the low end and it bypasses all these effects so it's not being affected by the distortion the hyper here so it's not getting any weird things in although depending on what process you are using you can turn this off and see how it affects the sound sometimes the processing can add to it rather than take away and in this case, it still seems to add a nice amount of uh, texture to the sound, but it's up to you how you want to do that. The other way you can add some extra mono compatibility to this sound is if we copy over this, uh, this oscillator to oscillator B, in the global settings, we've got this width control. Now, this might seem like an advanced feature to a lot of people, but if you're making bass music, it's very important you understand stereo width and how that applies to the sounds you're making. So what I'm going to do here is leave this oscillator one at 100% and make this one zero. And now if we turn this off and turn off the sub, you'll hear what it sounds like. Uh, make sure it's going through the filter, my bad. Right, as opposed to this one, which has obviously got the uh, unison on both. But what's happened with this one is it's now got mono voices so that the detune doesn't spread the voices over the stereo spectrum. And we can blend these two. You can hear it's a lot more mono compatible now because we've got this central version as opposed to a wide version. Now, one last quick consideration before I get on to the next tip is always try and use an odd number of voices. The reason this is is because if you see here, you'll get one central voice if you use an odd number, but you'll get two central voices if you use a even number. And if you use an even number, basically you're gonna have the central voices slightly detuned from each other, meaning your central voice isn't as strong and present. So now one thing I wanna get into next um, is, and now it's in the same patch, is something a lot of you may have heard of, but don't know exactly how to use. And it's this multi-band mode on the compressor, which is included with Serum. Now it's a, makes a massive difference to a lot of sounds. So let's hear it with and without it. It's copying the OTT preset, which originally was included in Ableton Live and is now made as a standalone plugin. It's basically putting that into Serum here itself so you can use it as an effect. Uh, so we've got a few controls here. Now, most people just slap it on and turn up the gain, which is cool. But I think there's a lot of novelty in playing around with these other controls and specifically the ratio and threshold. For example, one thing that it does by default is leave it on a ratio of four to one, which is quite cool. But if you really want to slam the sound, 
chuck it up to limit and you can just hear how it really, really compresses the sound and gives it a nice squashed feeling. And obviously, you can change the threshold. This is a bit too much for me, but oh. that's really cool. And then you can also shape the, uh, the frequency spectrum with the knobs on here. For example, this had a lot of high end. So I kind of brought it back a bit there. Uh, so that's really, really cool. Um, definitely worth playing around and knowing how to use that. One thing I don't think is fixed yet, um, and it's worth noting, is that this mix knob seems to kind of add some phasing issues to the sound, as you can hear at the beginning there. So I would stay away from using the mix knob. So the next thing I'm going to cover here is filters. I'm loading up this new instance of Serum here. We've just got this basic uh, Moog sound here with a bit of noise, a bit of filtering. I'll turn off the filtering for now, a bit of processing too. So filtering is really essential in synthesis and it's used in a lot of synths, but uh, one thing that's really cool about Serum, and I'm sure a lot of you will know this already, is the amount of filter types and cool things you can do with filtering. Uh, specifically, this miscellaneous section can really help you with creative sound design. And one thing in the latest version of Serum is these distorted comb filters, which I really like, but the same goes for all of these ones. Uh, specifically, the combs, all pass, reverb filters are really, really cool. Uh, Scream as well is really cool. Uh, so these techniques can be applied to any of those. One thing I've loaded up here is just this uh, distorted comb filter sound here. So it sounds like this. And if you play the low notes on your keyboard without it, You can hear it really adds a lot to the sound. The way I really get a lot of the sound out of this filter is by adjusting this comb frequency and the drive. See, the drive is what really gives it this texture. If I turn it down, you won't hear as much of that grittiness. And it's really nice. And then you get some resonance. There's a lot of like ways you can control this filter. I'm not even really using the low pass functionality, although you could. If you wanted that kind of re-space sound. One thing I do here is with the keyboard tracking. So the keyboard tracking basically allows me to get this comb frequency, which gives it that really uh, resonant kind of tonal sound to it. And I mapped it to the note, to the key. It's almost like this keyboard tracking, which normally is great to do. Uh, and I would do it for this one. But the reason I'm not is because the keyboard contract, the keyboard tracking rather controls the cutoff, whereas the cutoff isn't really where I'm getting the sound from here. So I chose this manual note modulation and then it changes based on the note. Which is really sick. And obviously there's other filter types you can play around with here. So there's some cool ways you can uh, get awesome sounds. And of course you've got like the classic reverb. Which always sounds great. The other thing I want to get over into next is FM noise. And basically what this allows us to do, and as you noticed, there's noise in this sound but we can't really hear it. I'm just gonna switch this back to the distorted current low pass. So one thing I do with uh, noise is use it as a modulation source for FM. Under these warp modes here, you've got this FM from noise oscillator. And basically it uses the noise's waveform to modulate the frequency of the uh, oscillator here, which gets some really, really cool textures. In this case, I might have to play it up a note and it does depend on the noise sample you load in. But let's just go and have a look here. You can get some really cool textures. And as I said, you play around with the different types of uh, noise samples and you can get different results. And it adds like the noise to the sound in like a more, I don't know, organic kind of way, I guess. So one thing when a lot of people get into Serum and they learn about like the LFOs, the envelopes to like add modulation to sounds is that they don't really learn the practical application of how to actually 
apply it and knowing what to move and how much to move it by. That's what I want to specifically focus on here is the how much because what happens a lot of the time is a producer will grab the LFO and they'll map the entire thing so you get this crazy movement across the entire uh, thing, which is not the best because if you do that, you get something like this, which sounds all right, but in, in many cases, if you changed it to something else, like the movement just doesn't really suit what we're going for. And what I want to advocate essentially is small movements with LFOs, envelopes, just so you can really nuance the sound and get really nice movements that sound smooth and not jagged. And what I've done here is I've modulated a few different things, the level of these oscillators, the filter cutoff and the oh, filter drive and the scream. Just ignore this one. I just did that as an example. And this FM from the sub as well. And it just really adds like a nice kind of movement to it as opposed to as I showed you before, if we were to move some of these a lot more intensely, like the drive or the scream, the movement's just a bit too crazy. And if we go even bigger, it's even weirder. Whereas smaller movements like that, You get some really nice tones out of it and it just adds a lot more nuance to the sound, which I really like. And one thing you can do on the topic of modulation is in the matrix here, you've got a lot more control over the modulations than you think. For example, if you've got a modulation that kind of sounds cool, but it just doesn't sound as tight as some of the other ones, you can play around with this curve here. This curve basically changes the relationship of the source to the destination allowing you to like make it kind of more rapid towards the end or the start, if that makes sense. So you, you can hear what we, me we mean if we uh, do it to this. So we can like do it to a few of them. Either way, whatever sounds good. Now, another concept I want to cover quickly is this concept of simple versus harmonically rich wavetables. I think a lot of the appeal from Serum comes from a lot of these really, really cool wavetables that are included and all these third party ones that you can, uh, you know, import yourself. And they've got these really cool movements in the wavetable position. And they sound sick, uh, especially. when played on their own. But one thing to consider when using these wavetables and exporting them or uh, playing around or processing them is that when you start with these wavetables, they've already got a lot of harmonic richness to them, which means that when you apply extra effects and the like, you're going to be affecting the sound and potentially if you do too much, you'll get a very uh, over the top, too crazy, too dense sound, which is why a lot of the time I advocate actually with, especially for beginners to start with these basic shapes because they are simple. They are very like standard analog kind of waveforms. And yeah, they're not ex the most exciting sounds, but there's a lot you can do with them in the way of processing. For example, this basic sine tone, which is just a single tone, single frequency. There's a lot you can do with it through processing, through distortion, so like, let's start with like a simple sine wave and some distortion. That's cool.
add another filter before the distortion. We can get some cool tones. Maybe if we go after the distortion and before the compressor. Add some width to it. But you get the point. It's just all from a single basic sine wave shape. And there's a whole lot more I could do there. Uh, but, you know, if we start with something like this, and let's see how this sounds. See, it's just way over distorted and it just doesn't really make the effect, at least in this case, for what I'm going for. So try and play around with simple wavetables and go from there. Going back to this other example with the... Uh, this bass. One thing I've done here is it's all modulated pretty much from one LFO. And LFOs are great, but one thing I'd recommend if possible is try play around with the macros instead, because that way you can start to get outside of Serum and add your own custom shapes. And I'll just quickly change these all to macro one now. So they should retain the same modulation amounts and everything like that. But now instead of relying on the LFO to control them, we can control it with basic automation. Great. Uh, let's just go into live here. And this will work in any DAW, by the way. Sweet. Let's draw in a... Basic pattern. Great. And then we'll show the automation in a new lane here. We go in far close. And you can see how that affects the sound. And that's sounding pretty nice. Another really cool thing I discovered, and it's really simple, especially if you're a beginner, is just playing around with presets and kind of creating your own sounds from combining other presets. And the way that you do this is if you find a really cool preset with like a nice, uh, I'll play this one here. Like this one has quite a nice effect rack, right? You can lock the effect rack of this particular preset and see how it sounds in comparison to other presets. So let, let's have a look. So like this is like all the same effect track. It's just that we're changing this section here. And obviously the modulations as well. If we load this same preset up in another synth, we can hear the difference. So this one's called Sludge Crank. So you can hear that we've made a completely different sound by combining the oscillator section with the effects section of another synth. That's our version. And it's as simple as that. And I I'd highly recommend going through your favorite preset packs and just scrolling through some samples, combining a few different effects, just simply by using the lock effect rack section.
Awesome. The last couple of things I want to get to while we're here is this oscillator resampling. This one's real quick. Basically, when you've got a sound in like a synth like this, all you do is you go in here and you go resample to oscillator A, uh, or you can do A and B if you want it in stereo. So I'm going to do that. And basically, before I do, what it's going to do is take this sound, all the effects processing, it's going to combine it into its own wavetable and allow me to mess around with it. Now, bear in mind, what it is going to do, though, is keep all the same processing on. So now we're essentially going to get double the processing. It's not sounding amazing with this one. Let's maybe grab one of the other ones. Let's go grab this one here. Let's resample to A and B. And now all that processing is happening again. So we can kind of turn it off. You can even do it a few times to kind of exaggerate it. But once again, it kind of can become too much very quickly. I'm also going to... Do it one more time. Sounding pretty cool. So that's one really fun way just to like reprocess and, and have fun with the existing sounds and kind of allow them to be your starting point again. And lastly, going back to our favorite sound here, I'm going to simply just change this back to our basic shapes. Reset control. And what we can do here is do some further processing to beef it up outside of Serum. Now, this is very highly dependent on which DAW you're using, uh, but I like to use, for example, some more OTT, some more distortion and other effects just to kind of get some cool processing. And there's no real rule here. It's just go nuts with external processing. I think a lot of people stick to just the default effects that are included in Serum. And I think they miss out as a result on a lot of the potential sound design possibilities when they don't venture outside. And I think Serum's a great starting point, but you can go even more crazy. For example, frequency shifter. pedal or amp even. is another great sound. And you get the point. You can get some really nice sounds. And this is after this. A simple few tweaks made this really cool sound. So go nuts with external processing. And that pretty much wraps it up for our uh, base sound design tips today, guys. If you have any questions about anything we've done here, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to go check out our latest podcast episode with Kashmir. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Uh, biggest podcast guest we've had on. So Connor did a really cool interview with him. Some really insightful stuff there. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Make sure to like the video and just share it with a friend who you think will get some cool tips out of it. All right, guys, this has been Aiden from EDM Prod. I will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.